Welcome now to a mini lecture about uh, the Jones polynomial and new knots and links from old. So when I say new knots and links from old, I mean uh, the various methods we have to get new knots and links from old ones, like reverses, taking reverses, taking sums, taking mirrors, so on and so forth. Um, so we're going to see how those affect the Jones polynomial. And this is what you can read um, in several results across pages 38 to 40. So, uh, what are the four results I want to tell you about? Uh, they're one, two, three, four on the left here. Um, number one tells us that the Jones polynomial of the reverse of an oriented link is the same as the Jones polynomial of that oriented link. Uh, the second one tells us that the Jones polynomial of the mirror of a link, and I've written of t to emphasize the fact that uh, this is a polynomial in t, well, what is the Jones polynomial of the mirror? It's the Jones polynomial of the original link uh, with t inverse substituted in in place of t. So that's with the all the powers negated, if you like. And uh, we've written these things as functions to indicate that. Uh, rule number three says the Jones polynomial of the distant union of two links. What's the distant union? Well, you take these two links, you the two oriented links, you put them into R3, and you move them far apart so that you can separate them by a plane um, and then uh, you simply take the union. So you take the union of the two but make sure they were far apart first. Well what's the result? The result is that the Jones polynomial of the distant union is the product of the two Jones polynomials times this other thing minus t to the minus a half minus t to the one half. And the final result is that if j and k are oriented knots then the Jones polynomial of their sum is the product of the Jones polynomials. Okay, so I'm not going to prove these to you. You can read the proofs in the notes, but I'm going to tell you some things about how to prove them. Um, so, what about number one? One's not difficult. Um, so, how do you prove that the Jones polynomial of the reverse is equal to the Jones polynomial of the original? Well, what is the Jones polynomial? It's combined, it's a combination of two quantities. The writhe of a diagram of L and the Kaufman bracket of a diagram of L. Now, writhe of the reverse of something is equal to writhe of that something. That's a simple exercise for you to prove. And uh, the Kaufman bracket does not depend on orientations. So if I change the orientation, then the writhe doesn't change and the Kaufman bracket doesn't change. Well, the right doesn't change because you work out that it doesn't change, and the Kaufman bracket doesn't change because it didn't care. It doesn't depend on orientations at all. Okay, how do we prove the second one? Well, we prove that the, again, we remember that the Jones polynomial is a combination of the writhes. So, in my discussion of uh, number one, I didn't tell you how you glue these things, how you how you take these two facts and use them to assemble the proof. Um, but this is the moral of the story: it's that that the Jones polynomial is combined from these two things and they don't change. Um, so, what about number two? Well, here things are changing, and how do they change? Well, if I take a diagram, ah, I'm going to write it this way. If I take a diagram and mirror it, now there's different ways, there's only, up to equivalence, there's only one way to take the mirror of a link, but in terms of diagrams there's different options and they produce genuinely different diagrams. So I'm going to use this over bar here to indicate that I've taken a diagram and just changed all its crossings from over to under, um, and that's what that bar says. So what happens to the writhe if I do that? It's negated. And what happens to the Kaufman bracket if I do that? Well. Uh, I get the same thing back, but with, remember the Kaufman bracket depends on a variable a, um, but with a inverse in place of a. So, how do you prove these two things? Well, this is easy. You just see what happens to a positive crossing when you reverse the crossing and what happens to a negative one. Uh, this one is tough. You have to use the definition of the Kaufman brackets. In other words, you have to use k1, k2, k3. So I, I heartily recommend you go to the notes and try and understand these parts of the proof. Okay, 
Uh, what about number three? How do we prove this one? Well, it's the same kind of deal. Um, if I take two diagrams, D and E, and I take their distant union by placing them in the plane separated by a line, then what I get is the sum of the rides. Uh, and what happens if I take the Kaufman bracket of that same distant union of diagrams, again it's the product of the Kaufman brackets. Uh, again, this one's easy, because what are the crossings in the union? They're just the crossings in D and the crossings in E. Um, this one, again, tough. So I'll write tough again. So these are things you really need to go in and have a look at. Um, and finally, what about this one? Uh, about the sums. Well, ah, hold on. There was a definite genuine error in my previous line. It's not that uh, it's not that these are equal. It's that they're equal with a factor of minus a squared minus a to the minus two. Sorry about that. Okay, uh, so let's go back to the sum. How do you prove the statement about the sum? So this one is completely different from the other ones. In fact, it follows from number three. Um, how does it follow from number three? Well, let's draw some diagrams that relate the sum of two knots with their distant union. So we're going to have some figurative drawings of knots using boxes. So let's take two boxes, one for J, one for k. And then let's take, uh, let's imagine that the diagram, that, that j has a diagram consisting of some box and a little loop coming out of it. And let's assume that k has a diagram consisting of some box and a little loop coming out of it, like that. We can always make diagrams like this. So what is this? Well, this is an L0, right? Can you see that? This is my sort of smooth region. And what is it? It's the distant union of j and k. So I know the Jones polynomial of this, right? Because I can use three to compute its Jones polynomial from the Jones polynomial of J and K. So in this circumstance, what are my L plus and then my L minus? Well, my L plus is what I get by erasing these and inserting in a positive crossing like that. So this is L plus and how are the orientations going like that? And what is L minus? It's the thing I get by inserting a negative crossing. Like this. So there we go, that's L minus, and let's put the orientations in. Um, now, what are these two things? They're both equivalent to the sum of J and K. How on earth are these equivalent to the sum of J and K? Well, um, imagine, so let's Let's do that over here. Imagine I take uh, the left-hand side, the J bit, and I rotate it 180 degrees this way around a horizontal axis. Imagine I do that. Then what happens? Well, then I've picked up J, I've rotated everything 180 degrees, and I'm going to write that uh, like this to try and emphasize the situation. <laughs> okay. And then what's happened to these two strands? Well, what's happened to these two strands is that they'll have straightened out, right? And this one will go left to right, and this one will go right to left. Um, so this is equivalent to L plus. And if you did the same thing, but rotated the other way, you'd see it's equivalent to L minus. Now, what is this? Well, I could have got this thing from uh, my original two di diagrams, but with the left-hand one rotated a bit. Right? Uh, and now you see that what's the passage from the thing at the bottom to the thing at the top? That's exactly taking the sum. So these things you see by comparing with the picture at the bottom are both diagrams, uh, are both J sum K. Um, so 
uh, that's how we prove this. We write down a, an instance of the skein relation, two of the terms are j sum k's, and one of them is a j distant union k. And we know the Jones polynomial of that, and so we can just do some manipulations. Okay, so let's have some consequences. Consequence number one, the Jones polynomial of a knot is independent of orientations. Why? Well, we know the Jones polynomial doesn't change if you take a reverse. How many reverses does your favorite knot have? Only one, right? And how many orientations does it have? Two. One is the, orient is, one is the reverse of the other. So that uh, I don't, if I take a knot that's not oriented, I orient it this way, take the Jones polynomial, orient it that way, take the Jones polynomial, it doesn't matter, I'll always get the same thing. That doesn't work for links, right? Because a link with two components has four orientations. Two of them are identified by reverses, another two of them are identified by reverses, but there's no connection between the first two and the second two. So it's only if you've got a knot. Another consequence, uh, let's take k to be this knot, this particular trefoil then the knot k is not equivalent to its mirror. Why? Well, we know that the Jones polynomial of this thing is minus t to the 4 plus t cubed plus t. So what's the Jones polynomial of its mirror? Well, it's what we get by substituting t inverse for t. So we get this. And those two aren't equal, right? Here the highest power is plus 4. There the highest power is minus 4. They can't possibly, sorry, they're the look. On the left, the highest power is 4. On the right, the highest power is minus 1. They can't possibly be equal. Uh, and so if they were, if k was equivalent to its mirror, these two would be equal, but they're not, so it can't be. And here is a non-consequence, or non-sequence. Um, let k be the figure at, the figure 8, drawn here. Then, well, we haven't done it yet, but you will. The Jones polynomial of this knot is t squared minus t plus 1 minus t inverse plus t to the minus 2. So imagine we tried to prove that k was not equivalent to its reverse. Then we'd work out, sorry, that k was not equivalent to its mirror. Well, then we'd work out v of the mirror of k. It's what we get from this by substituting t inverse in place of t. But clearly, that would give us the same thing back again. So the Jones polynomial of this knot is equivalent, is equal to the Jones polynomial of its mirror. So we learn nothing from that. But actually we knew anyway, because you ought to remember um, from early on in the example sheets for this course that that knot is equivalent to its mirror. That's an exercise we did. Okay, so that's the end of the mini lecture.